Hi, I'm Mike Hummel, and I'm a former Wonder Hostess employee who has uh, managed to get uh, some word out there about the differences between uh, what the company's saying and what is true, and this is an attempt to illustrate that farther. Hostess, as a company, started, I think it was 82 years ago. Uh, they survived through the end of the uh, Depression and were the inventors of sliced bread. That gave them a huge advantage in the marketplace, obviously, and were able to produce, uh, mass-produce sliced bread, and everybody loved it. And that's where the phrase, uh, better than sliced bread, comes from. That's a, a technically a Wonder Bread invention. Uh, people who work there are extremely proud of that stuff, love the fact that they're a part of a long-term successful endeavor, an iconic brand. Um, everybody knows what Wonder is. There's no, you know, there's no question it's on the level of Coke and McDonald's and Disney World and all that. Everyone knows what Wonder. And it, it's something that everyone who worked there had a lot of pride in. Uh, Especially for me in the early days, uh, I had 14 years there in the first several years. I mean, there's no question, everyone, was, everyone loved it there. Everyone was very happy. I had a total of 17 years with Wonder Bread and Hostess Cake. Okay. Uh, my father worked for him for 33 years also. Um, I grew up on Hostess and Wonder Bread. Uh, my worth ethic was 200% for this company. Um, I hate to see it fail. Uh, you know, I've got kids, I've got, you know, I gave hours and hours and hours to a company that has a name for 90 years that I feel that, you know, I hate to see it go down. Yeah. What they've done is they've, uh, they've, they've created this situation where they can get rid of the unions and take the brand names. And there are 30 brand names, and a lot of those brand names are huge. People don't realize they're hostess. Uh, for example, Drake's Cakes. Uh, Butternut, Dolly Madison, um, you know, Home Pride, all that kind of stuff is Wonder Bread products and Hostess products. And uh, when they when they do this, they're stripping the unions away from those brands and selling the brands in order to drive up the value of that brand. And so by not having union involved when they sell the brand name Hostess to another company. Uh, they've actually driven the value so high that while in the media this is portrayed as that they are going to lose a ton of money, the reality is that these owners will pocket hundreds of millions of dollars by the time they sell this company. I'm, I, you know, they're going to, they supposedly sold $2.5 billion worth of product last year. Uh, so according to the company's own uh, people, they're going to sell for around 2.3 to 2.4 billion dollars and if they do that with no union costs then the companies that are doing this sale monarch and silver point that own us are in fact going to pocket hundreds of millions of dollars despite the media narrative that they have lost everything the only people who have lost everything are the employees who the company has put out on the street uh, without having to do so i got my last two checks uh, that i worked for a uh, hostess uh, the last week that I worked and I got my vacation pay. Uh, I didn't really think I was going to get my vacation pay, but I got it. Checked my, uh, uh, my account at uh, the bank and it was there. And that's the first week of the strike was the week you were on vacation? Yes. And you yes. got your check for that week? Uh, well, from the week before, from the ninth. Right, they paid yeah. in advance. Yep, I got and, the next week. But that payment, when did you earn that week of vacation? Oh, that was from the, the year before, yeah. Right. yeah. So you already earned that week of vacation? Yes, okay. yes. And I got both, I got my last paycheck and my, uh, uh, my vacation pay. And then four days later, I got, both, of the, both those checks were deposited on the 16th. And on the 20th, they went back into my account and withdrew my vacation pay. And uh, that's uh, you know that that's money that a lot of us that are doing that they've done that to other people. Oh yeah. You know I'm not the only one. Oh, sure, sure. And you know you take our money that we've already earned, you already put it in there, and then you take it right back out. <laughs> yeah. What is that? All right. Yeah, you know, it's not right. You know, not, not all the all the things that we've given up over the years, and now we're getting nothing to show for. Yeah. You know, You're not even getting what you paid. No, no yeah. not at all. Not at all. And uh, it's not just me. It's, it's everybody else, too. You know, and that's not right. All the years of service that we put into the company, and then it's like a slap in the face. You know, it's like our, our, our contributions to your, you know, to your, uh, to your place, 
meant nothing to you. And that's not right. So, so as far as the retirement goes, um, you had, how many years would you estimate till you were going to retire? I had six years left. Okay. And now how many do you have? I have 18 years left. So in the matter of, over the course of reading a letter, you basically went from six years to 18 years. Correct. Wow. Wow. And yes, I am extremely angry about that. Um, I'm extremely angry that corporate is still asking for more money. That was my raises that I voted to put into my pension that they have refused to put in there. And that is the reason why I went from a six years till I was eligible for my full retirement until 18 years till I'm eligible. And that is not fair while they're still getting their pensions, their bonuses, and their big bucks. As far as our uh, pension is concerned, the way it works is that we pay $4.25 an hour off of our check into our pension. And it's not necessarily all pension. $3.26 an hour is our pension uh, directly to the pension fund that supports all the retirees. Um, 75 cents is to a retiree insurance program that the union runs for uh, people who worked at bakeries in the past, but maybe they're not currently open bakeries, but whatever, they need some help. Uh, so we have a retiree insurance program that can help those people. We also have a death benefits program of 24 cents an hour that we pay per, per employee per hour at the bakery uh, in order to support the death benefits. You know, so for example, if some, you know, some guy worked at a bakery in the 1980s and it, the bakery closed, it was consolidated or something, and he's, you know, been out of the loop for 20, 30 years and uh, dies and his wife can't afford to bury him, then the union will step in with some uh, death benefits and bury, that per, bury them for, the, for her. Uh, you know, and that's, you know, I feel good about that coming out of my check. You know, we spend 425 an hour on you know supporting our pension fund and these uh, retiree benefit packages and the company decided in august of 2011 to you know in their words temporarily suspend payments they would continue to collect the 425 an hour from us so they still got their money it is self-funded i mean you know they collected that 425 an hour from us but then they turned around and did not send it to the pension. So that's why we in bankruptcy now because they didn't implement none of the plans that they said they were going to do. Yeah, you were I there mean, for that. They, yeah. they promised what they, they, they promised were going to take $10 a week and what were they going to do with it? And they was going to reinvest it into the business. Mm -hmm. They never did done it. Nope. <laughs> they never, none of it for what, three years? So what did they do with the money? You know, then they turn around, as soon as it comes time for contract time, all they want to do is say, this is the best and final offer, which was ridiculous. And can't nobody live by those means. We, we giving up 27% of our salary over, what, five years? Yeah. Uh, pay 17% more for our health insurance for less coverage, our earned income, that we work every $10 for every week that we work. We ain't gonna get that. They stole fifty million dollars from our pension, and they stopped paying into the pension. So I mean, how can you live? I mean, we didn't have. They didn't leave us no choice. And they talking about not contributing to our fund. This is what they stole. Okay. This is money that was right. agreed to and voted on years before. Before before our parents was even born. So we're not talking about the company contribution to the pension. We're talking specifically about our contribution to the pension. Right, our contribution. Yes. Okay, I see that everywhere where people are saying that, the, well, the company has The company had nothing to do with that. That was something that we negotiated to have coming out of our wages to, to go into our, our pension. Okay. You know, it was our wages that went into that. So how does that directly affect the hourly wage? I mean, it's not as high, right? It's not as high. Just like if, we, if, if, if they say, well, we're going to do away with it, fine. Put that 426 back onto our, sal onto, to our salary. Right. But they wouldn't do that either. Yeah. It made that salary a little bit lower, but still at the same time, we had we was looking towards the future. This is why this was voted in. Yeah, yeah. So they not only stole my pension money, they stole the retiree death benefit money, they stole the retiree insurance package money, they stole both of those things in addition to my pension. And they don't, you know, there's, there's no qualms there for them. They, they do it and they're okay with it. And I don't know what the answer to that is. I would not steal someone's 
death benefit package. I mean, it just sounds amazing to me that it would even be considered. Uh, you know, and that's that's 99 cents out of the 425 is the 24 cents for retiree death benefits and, reti and 75 cents for uh, retiree insurance. And you know, the union as a whole, I think in general, everyone feels really good about you know committing that 99 cents an hour over the course of our lifetimes to those funds. And the company decided to stop sending that money to the places where the money was supposed to go, to the funds. And so two things have happened is number one is our pension is stolen. The company does not have to pay that money back because the judge waived it. And two is that we will never get that money back. It's just gone off the top on our, you know, they're not treating, in the whole contract where they talk about our wage cuts, they don't count the 425, they just pretend it like it never existed. So when you hear that we're getting an 8% pay cut in year one, remember that it's actually 27% over five years and they steal the 425 an hour from our pension forever. They don't ever have to pay it back. The judges waived it as part of the bankruptcy proceedings. Now, in addition to that, people continue to make the false assumption that we will get help from the federal government because there is a pension insurance program where the, the government steps in and helps. There is no reason to believe that that will help us. That is a program designed for pensions that are underfunded and need money in order to continue. Um, that is different than what happened at Wonder Bread. What Wonder Bread did was they collected the 425 an hour from our checks and just never sent it to the pension. So there's no one to bail out. The, the, the insurance, the federal insurance program for, ins for pensions isn't going to come to me with a check for 425 an hour. That money is just gone and stolen from me forever. It's just simply gone. Um, the, you know, they just, because they never even bothered to send it to the pension fund, uh, it's almost like it never existed as far as the federal pension insurance program is concerned. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the gist of it, is they stole our 425 and then they don't even have to pay it back because of bankruptcy proceedings. In the previous contract, we agreed to pay $10 a week for infrastructure. Um, do you feel that you've seen any infrastructure improvements at Hostess no, I have in not. those years? But they continue to get your $10, right? Exactly, and that's part of the money. Where did it go to? Right. And $10 a week, by the way, times 18,500 employees is a lot of money. Yes, it is. And you can buy a lot of semi-trailers and tractors and, you know, I, you know, in years of receiving and shipping, I don't recall seeing new trailers and tractors. Do you? Very few. <laughs> You know, we're talking one out of every hundred, you know, maybe a year. <laughs> yeah. So, no, they are not keeping up with our $10 a week, and plus our health care through all this stuff that has gone up. In the media, we see a lot of reports about uh, how the union did not accept the contract offer, and we see a lot of uh, commentary about how the contract offer was not that bad and that we should have just taken it, and then we'd all have jobs still. Well. I don't think those people understand what the contract actually included. There's all kinds of myth out there about what the company offered us and they, they say all these wonderful things that sound so wonderful like 25% ownership and $100 million in third tier debt and all that. What people need to understand is the company has owed us money before in the union and went to a judge and had that money waived, made, made it so that we didn't get anything. So why would we believe that? we're going to get $100 million out of these people down the road in the future when the unicorns come in and they make all this profit. I just don't believe that that's how it's going to work. And if they were to file for bankruptcy, third tier debt would be thrown out the window instantly. And there would be nothing to show for our contract signing. Um, the media is heavily focused on that kind of detail. Uh, as far as uh, what the company has offered us, but they don't really discuss the things the company asked for from us. Uh, for instance, you hear about the 8% pay cut in year one. They conveniently forget that that's 27% over five years. Um, I'm tired of hearing about how it's only 8% in one year. It is 27% over five years, and that's a big number. It would take my hourly rate, which is currently 16.12 an hour, and it would drop it to 11.26. Um, personally, I, I, I think that that would destroy my life, and can I find a job that pays 11.26? Yes, I can. So when people say, 
that we should have just kept the job and gone, gone with the contract and looked for a job afterwards. Um, no, I shouldn't. I should defend the job I have because what they've offered us is an insult to anyone who's ever had to work in a bakery. I mean, the working conditions there are dramatic. I mean, the heat is intense. You have two giant ovens going at all times. Um, you know, in the summertime especially, it can be 140 degrees sometimes in there. That's not an exaggeration. People don't understand how hot it is in a bakery when the ovens can hold literally thousands of loaves of bread at one time. I mean, these are big ovens. Um, you know, and we move, you know, thousands of pounds of ingredients and product all day long. And, you know, the reality is that there's a lot involved with the federal regulations of mass producing food. Uh, it's just not a simple job that everyone thinks it is. It's a lot of work. And this company thinks that they can pay eleven twenty-six an hour to have people do those jobs. Uh, frankly, I think that if they actually had that, they would destroy the product. I don't think that you would have a quality Wonder Bread product. You would not have anything close to what you have had prior to this. Uh, um, uh, you know, they would really, really wrench down the quality if they went to eleven twenty-six an hour because you're not going to have any veterans seasoned, experienced bakers stay in that environment because the work is so hard. Certain zones on the oven wouldn't get the temperature to cook the bread. And, and if you didn't get the temperature up to a certain degree, by you putting product in the oven would bring the oven temperature down so the bread wouldn't cook like it should and it brings on mold. And, uh, the life chef expectancy would be less than what it should have been. You know, but all that was finger pointed at employees as far as things yeah. being done. Yeah. It's heavy, you know, it's physical heavy and uh, they respect you to do that job yeah, with little equipment because we don't got no equipment. They don't even buy vacuum, brushes, everything kind of like uh, do it by hand, you know. You gotta find ways to do it because uh, sometimes we don't even have a little filter for the flower, the vacuum, you know, with the vacuum. You know, a lot of stuff like that they need parts on it like the oven belts and the chains on the oven and the, and the takeout bar and you know it's just that they haven't put anything into bread wrapping as far as repairing the machine. They bought, for instance they bought one machine but the machine that they bought was supposed to be a, a new machine but it ran worse than the old machines. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it, was no, it wasn't, I don't think that they was really even thinking about the fact that they needed to do certain things to the place but it was just stuff in their pockets and feet in Wall Street. What offends me the most is the fact that we give a lot back out of the last bankruptcy, only to see it all be wasted away, no reinvestment back in the, in the shops, no yeah. new equipment, no nothing. And that was a promise they made, right? That was part of the deal, right? That's part of the contract that we signed with them. That's what they also made the same promises to the bankruptcy courts. This time? The last or time when they come out of it. Okay. And none of, that, none of that held true. The only difference I see is money come out of my check, but besides that, you know, I see the big man's get a big bonus. It's only different, I see. Yeah. I mean, for okay. no improvement, no nothing, you know. Well, the main thing that kind of kind of bothered me as far as working with the company is the way the CEOs went and gave themselves a raise bonus and increase, and then they filed bankruptcy and laid all the blame on production and the labor costs. And I feel like, if they was going to do something like that, at least put it on the put it on the fact of spending money on the equipment that we was working with, because a lot of the equipment was breaking down and it need repairs, and the money that they stuck in their pocket should have been the money that they should have put on investing into the company. You know, Wonder Bread Hostess is basically a piece of paper. You know, if it's not the employees, then what is Hostess? You know, it's certainly not Monarch and Silverpoint who own that piece of paper that says Hostess on it. Um, they certainly don't have any love and respect for that piece of paper that says Hostess on it. Certainly not like what the employees have and what I've seen over the course of my 14 years there. Uh, and for them to destroy it, for the company to do that to these employees and then go to the media and make it sound like we wouldn't negotiate with them. I mean, as far as that's concerned, people need to remember that the company would not negotiate with us, okay? It's not that we wouldn't negotiate with the company, it's that the company knew that what they were going to offer us was ridiculous, so they went to a bankruptcy judge and they asked for the judge to impose the contract. They did not come to us and say, 
let's negotiate a contract. That day never happened. They simply went to the judge and got it imposed on us. Um, you know, and, and it's true that after the judge gave them permission to impose it on us, that we voted on it, we voted it down, and then we voted that if the judge, that if the company actually went so far as to impose it on us, then we would go ahead and walk. The company at that point could have sold us. They didn't have to close the doors, but they did. And part of that strategy was blaming the union for that, so it makes it easier for them to strip the union from the brand names during the sale. Do you, do you feel that the court has uh, been fair, or do you feel like overall they just are focused on one side? I think they're focused on hostess, period. They're not, they have no, don't seem to have any consideration whatsoever for the employees. Okay. Everything they've done, they ruled against us on. And as you know, they turn around and give the top execs 1.8 million. We got people sitting out there, the three shops we have in the local, what they owe our members is a little over $7 million. Wow. I mean, look at severance, vacation, everything else is there, and it's just all, you know, we'll be doing good to get 20 cents on the dollar. I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, so we have, yeah. <laughs> and the way they, what, what they're doing, they had us back in the, the, in the late 80s, early 90s. Wow, okay. When you look at wages and benefits. That's, yeah, that's, so. you know, that's, that's something that I, I can never, get past is I think about how much we make now and I compare it to what I made in the 90s when I was you know going around knocking on doors trying to do people's yard work you know right. and it's amazing how much closer to that this is now than it used to be yeah. uh, you know it used to not even be close now it's, yeah. it's right there now it's just keep putting on the back of the workers Wall Street and hedge funds they make money hand over fist and all comes off our backs these hedge funds got control and they, you know, they didn't care that you have to reinvest in your infrastructure over time because their goal was never to create a high quality product and sell it for a profit. The goal was from day one, how do you strip the unions from these brands and then sell the brands without the, the legacy costs? Uh, I'm just uh, glad that everything's kind of looking on the brighter side of stuff. You know, I mean, I, I just wish that they would have not lied to everybody about how they were going to do this. They kept and telling everybody that they weren't going to do this, but then they just lied to us and let us on. And I just wish they would, uh, they would have just been up front with everybody. Because if we would have took a pay cut, they were still going to liquidate the company regardless. You know, just if they would have been up front with us and just said, okay, yeah, we're going to do this, you know, fine, do it. And just let everybody move on. Now, everybody's able to move on. I hope in reality that, you know, everything goes well for everybody involved and I wish everybody the best, you know. How, how do you feel about this, the well, rapid response team and all well, that? Well, the rapid response team, I think they're giving everybody information that they need to move forward in their lives and everything. And uh, I was glad something like this was available for most of us people that just got laid off or lost their jobs and uh, so far so good. What I really want people to understand is that the, the media's portrayal of this has been terrible. They have simply not portrayed the facts in an accurate way. They got their company press release and they ran with it and never checked with the union or other people who were involved uh, as, as to the actual storyline or events. The media has just simply repeated what the company said uh, note for note, and millions of people believe that the bakers caused this company to close and to liquidate, and that's simply inaccurate, and the media has done a terrible job of correcting that myth. And I guess what I would ask of you is that if you see something in the media where it doesn't represent the bakers' actual side of the story, then please just send them a polite email and tell them that you know there's more to the story than what they have told you. Um, I have found that that works. The media will uh, will respond and sometimes they will even change the way they talk about something and sometimes they'll even include actual facts about the event. So I would suggest that if you see something that doesn't seem accurate, tell them. And uh, that's the best way to, to get the word out on behalf of hostess workers. All right, thank you. Hey, you will eat, you will eat, by and by, in that glorious land in the sky. And pray, pray. Hey, live on hay, live on hay. You'll get by in the sky when you die. That's, That's a lie. lie. For working folks, 
hearts of all countries unite. Side by side, we for freedom shall fight.